the 1st of March, the new month has started in 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, how the time flies. January has gone, February has gone, and you just try and understand the third month of the 2021 has also come. And the time has caught on wheels now and the way things are moving. And today we have got 699th webinar. And tonight at 8 p.m. we have got 700 webinars we complete during this particular pandemic. Now, union budget, which was presented by the Honorable Finance Minister of India, she has given the budget uh, to all of us. And that was on 1st of February. So let me just, uh, because a lot of people are sending messages. So let me just extend a welcome to all of them. Besides, we extend a very warm welcome to Colonel Devdath Chaudhary ji from the Army Education Corps, who has been deeply associated with military schools, Senec schools, couple of places he has been posted during his career. And he was also principal of Senec school Bhuvneshwar, that's in Odisha. So ladies and gentlemen, on 1st of February, the Honorable Finance Minister, she announced the new budget and where she talked about a couple of uh, verticals, six verticals she had discussed. Vertical number four, what she discussed over there is dedicated to education empowerment. And in that, one of the agenda she had taken is setting up 100 new scenic schools in India in PPP mode. That means the private sector participation is coming with the public sector where the NGOs, the private schools, the state governments and other stakeholders. So well, the note has been sent to the cabinet for consideration and approval. But meanwhile, we are carrying out this particular series where we want to understand what exactly is needed? What is the present status of scenic schools which are existing? And we learn from the legends who have been posted over there in different capacities. If you recollect last uh, Thursday, you had a group captain sub from the Indian Air Force who was principal in Nagrota. And today, when we are going to take you to Odisha, the principal Colonel Devda Chaudhary ji, who served over there. And besides that, he had been, as I told you, with the military schools and a couple of other establishments. Today is the 16th program. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four days a week, we are dedicating exclusively, our focus is 100 new scenic schools which have to come up in India. What is the way forward? What is the journey forward? How to move ahead? What all is to be done? So while extending a very hearty welcome to all of you this evening, Ladies and gentlemen, let's start the journey onward. And uh, International Chamber for Service Industry, ICSI, extends a very warm welcome to all of you. It's a pleasure. And the first person to join this evening on the YouTube is Colonel Inder Mohan, sir. I hold him in the great regards. He's a wonderful soul. And I could meet uh, Colonel Chaudhary ji also through his good offices. Now, our chamber, during the pandemic, we have been focusing and now also and onward also, we have taken the agenda. There are two verticals very important in the entire universe. Of course, the third vertical we are not dealing, our chamber is not dealing directly with. So one is the food part, the agriculture part. Second is the health part. And third is education. So well, we have taken the agenda for the education education empowerment, education relevance, education, what kind of an education, where all education, for whom education, outcome of education, education policy, education implementation. In the, now you know the budget, if you recollect, it was announced that 6% of the uh, budget, that means uh, education budget, when we talk about the whole GDP, so 6% of the GDP will be spent in the education sector. That's what we have to talk about, verticals. Okay. India strongly believes that the whole world is one family. It is a Vasudev Kutubakam. All of us, we are brothers and sisters of same God. And on 29th of July, there was a new education policy being given to India. And this particular policy, which has come through the good offices, blessings, patronage, goodwill, gesture, whatever you want to talk about, by the Honorable Prime Minister of India in the thick of pandemic, along with his entire team and Dr. Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishankji, the Education Minister of India. 
so it's going to be a game changer as far as education in india is concerned because school education higher education technical education vocational education need based education blended education flip learning education outside classroom education vocational education anything you talk about all that has been taken care of over here because the vision of the honorable prime minister is and that was announced on once again 1st february during the budget india has to become atmanirbhar self reliant india and these six pillars which are union minister for finance she gave it and these are the key reforms for education sector the budget being increased by 9.5% and all the verticals when you see schools 15000 new schools got to be strengthened and that is under the new education policy 100 new scenic schools to be set up and then 750 eklavya model school new university coming in le ladakh and then couple of other initiatives which have been taken so 9.5% budget allocation higher look at these small kids wonderful kids god bless them these wonderful flowers and this is the central university which is going to be the 55th university in india which is coming up in leh ladakh eklavya schools we have discussed now education is deeply blended with skills also very important which we have to understand because uh, the government of india ministry of uh, skill development and entrepreneurship they have signed a kind of an mou with the uae as well as with the japan how the joint programs can be taken care of we are proud of our brother officers and i am really grateful to all of them they had been very kind to spare their valuable time and to be with us to share their vision to share their expertise and to give us lot of valuable inputs right from 2nd of february after the budget has been announced and we have been deliberating on how the scenic school should be done we started with colonel sudhanshu arya ji we had gone to colonel inder mohan there was colonel amarjit singh colonel palaram ji and major general ranjit singh ji and colonel k mukherjee and thereafter colonel arun datta then major general gumman then colonel shekhar then major general ss nair then colonel rajinder nehra ji then dr sanjay kumar bahl he was also in nagrota earlier then colonel uh, prashad ji and thereafter colonel hari dubey ji he talked about chinese language and group captain ajay kumar ji wonderful journey with all of them i am so grateful to them that they had been very kind our chamber strongly believes that the triangle when we talk about its education its skills and outcome of these two combination of these two the third part that is called entrepreneurship that is self employment and msme sector micro small and medium enterprise so ladies and gentlemen after pandemic all the research which we have gathered from world over the world has to get into new order sustainable development we get to back to the basics of life b2b is not going to be any more business to business we have to get back to the basics of life basic food basic health basic education sustainable development our chamber has dedicated 2021 two months have already gone teachers and youth empowerment and atmanirbhar bharat when we talk about all these verticals have to be taken into consideration we are having almost 12 hours beaming every day can you imagine we have got 28 programs per week so on the average we have got four programs per day this is the finishing school concept we brought to india way back in 1994 and if you'll go on the ai city website all india council for technical education even if you will see the policy of the government of india ministry of education of rusa rashtriya uchchatar shiksha abhiyan for the higher education you'll get the element of the finishing school so we are very proud that we worked quite a bit on this project when you are talking about etiquettes manners gesture body language dining etiquettes dress etiquettes uh talking etiquettes interpersonal relationship uh creative thinking collaborative thinking analytical thinking logical thinking communication skills anything you talk about and education should not be for living it should be for life skills so when we are taking all this into consideration icsi would be more than happy to help anybody for setting up incubation center finishing lab or utter tinkering lab which are basically under the purview of niti aayog 
women empowerment is very important and from today the new journey is starting because 8th of march is international women day honorable prime minister in his program and at the same time honorable finance minister in her address everybody is emphasizing and if you go through the details you will understand india cannot become 5 trillion economy without the most valuable support by the women folk they got to be supportive in every field and that's why you have got in armed forces also at the same time we got to save every drop of water you would say what relevance it has got whatever education we are taking it got to be practical to our day to day life next misunderstanding world over will come on water now ladies and gentlemen today is first exactly 7 days from now that is on 8th of march there is going to be a international women day we will have a special now you'll be so happy to know after this program today which is going on now you'll have the next program at 8 pm today and every day every day you'll have a special program we would like to share with all of you and that is we are carrying out a series today is 1st march you're going to have western india tomorrow southern india day after tomorrow northern india and then 4th of march eastern india 5th of march school students and this we are talking about girl child then 6th of march college students 7th of march you will have beautiful it is something education through music or music in education creativity or music creativity in education any term you can use sunita bhuiya ji she is a great violinist and she would be sharing with us beautiful notes on 7th of march on sunday evening at 8 pm all these programs what we have got then 8th of march you have got dr rekha choudhury she is the global wellness ambassador and we will be inviting lot of non resident indians ladies from world over our uh, sisters our daughters our children they all will be joining the girl child from the world over they would be the part of this program and tonight at 8 pm don't forget to join us you will be having 12 celebrities along with amrita dudhia ji and they are going to talk about women leadership now this is the slogan this is the motto and this is the coining which has been given by united nation women leadership achieving an equal future in a covid 19 world and today's program what we are having at 5 pm now with karan choudhury it also holds relevance because now the girls are coming in armed forces also so that's a proud privilege so whatsoever human mind can conceive and believe it can achieve we are proud to have colonel devdutt choudhury ji this evening from the army education corps the gentleman who has dotted his entire career with the scenic schools with the military schools and he was principal at bhuvneshwar also ladies and gentlemen join me in welcoming extending a very warm welcome this evening through the lens of colonel inder mohan ji colonel devdutt choudhury ji it's a pleasure to have you this evening with us so you can unmute your wife mic hearty welcome to you pleasure to have you with us you got to unmute your mic sir it is not unmuted so i would request you to kindly unmute your mic please so ladies and gentlemen today we are going to have deliberations with colonel devdutt choudhury ji he is from the army education corps and we all are going to discuss we are going to have the deliberations and there comes live with the vocal cords and the communications with colonel devdutt choudhury ji hearty welcome pleasure to have you with us thank you very much sir so kind of you <laughs> as a matter of fact i was listening to all the work that you are doing this is amazing i It's... mean to to reach 699 webinars today is absolutely fantastic thank you and, sir thank you sir. and also the spread of your work i mean you are covering almost all the important things The that whole the, the whole canvas is around education yes, and youth, yes, sir. Yes, so absolutely. So first of all, hearty welcome to you this evening. Thank you very much for sparing your most valuable time Thank and you, joining sir. us this evening. आप पहले 
अपना एक्सपीरियंस शेयर कीजिए अपनी जर्नी शेयर कीजिए टॉक टू अस अबाउट योर मिलिट्री स्कूल्स योर सैनिक स्कूल योर प्रिंसिपलशिप एंड वो दैट जर्नी वी वुड लाइक टू लिसन बिकॉज दो स्टोरीज आर वेरी वेरी सेंटिलेटिंग एंड वेरी कैप्टिवेटिंग शेयर विद अस सर एक्चुअली आई आउट ऑफ द टोटल करियर जर्नी ऑफ अबाउट 30 इयर्स आई हैव स्पेंट ऑलमोस्ट अबाउट 16 इयर्स इन स्कूल्स लाइक डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ स्कूल्स and of course i was principal of sunny school bhuvneshwar so this is something which i dare say that i don't think any other officer has got a chance somehow beginning with my schooling in the mothers international school in delhi i was always attached to education so it so happened that when i joined the army also there was no special effort on from my side but somehow it happened that i got to serve in these schools so i begin my Uh, details as you asked me by thanking you for this invitation sani schools are very close to my heart and i'm extremely grateful for this opportunity that you have given me to talk about them and in addition to sani school also about other ministry of defense schools so today are times when we need to unleash power of education as we emerge out of covid and new frontiers are opening up and if some time permits i will also and then speak something about the new education policy uh, before proceeding further sir i would like to bring you uh, to your notice two excellent unesco documents one is learning to be which was uh, authored by edgar for in 1972 a french educationist and second was learning the treasure within it came out in 1996 authored by jacques delors another french educationist these two documents are absolutely outstanding documents on education and uh, i have wherever i have gone whichever schools i have uh, led whichever schools i have taught i also as a teacher i have always told my teachers to read these two documents but uh, personally uh, i will admit that somehow i did not see much uh, support on this issue but nevertheless i would like to just reiterate the preamble to unesco which says that since wars begin in the minds of men it is in the minds of men that defenses of peace must be constructed and the only medium to construct the defenses of peace is education and that's where both these documents learning to be and learning the treasure within come very handy every human being on this earth on this planet has a right to education whether they get it or not is a different matter but they have a right and they have also have right to learn learn about themselves learn about their country learn about the mother earth and all these rights will only be possible as you rightly mentioned by if you unleash the power of education in addition we also have indian scriptures we have the outstanding kothari commission report and many more documents and right now the government has taken out the new education policy which i feel is i i have followed all the education policies of the government this one has come out of quite some time but it is very well drafted and uh, i will touch it touch it touch upon it little later again so little bit of my self introduction i started my career after schooling in the mothers international school and then joined the army education corps after finishing my ms in physics from hindu college delhi i served in two brigades as education officer then i was posted to rimc rashtriya indian military college where i served for 3 years 3 and a half years i was there and along with me six more of officers of army education corps were posted there and i must say that we seven of us we made a very good team and produced outstanding results so i'll tell you that in one one particular course in nda there were 100 and in, in during our stay sir we sent 156 rimcolians to nda which is a record and out of this 156 there was a course where top 9 cadets who joined nda were from rimc uh, this record has not been replicated till today after arrange sir i joined military school belgaum where i was the administrative officer 
that was a very good school very good journey in british school belgaum i was able to send 18 boys during my 3 year tenure to the nda then sir i moved to up sainis school lucknow it's a unique school up sainis school lucknow is the only school which is still run by the state government i was very lucky to be posted there as headmaster and uh, I, when i was posted there that was after a gap of about 14 years that school got a headmaster so you can imagine my the hard work that i had to put in to to pick up the school and uh, you know bring it up uh, i had a very good principal and a good registrar and three of us worked together in up sainis school all the funding is done by the state government and uh, minister of defense only provides the three officers so it was a very good experience so there were some discipline issues which we sorted out and today sir the school is doing very well due to efforts of all my predecessors and whatever effort i could put in thereafter sir i went to our center in pachmadi as registrar of the autonomous college it was a purely academic work lot of work lot of interaction with the sagar university and uh, it kept me busy for a long long time from there sir i moved to sainis school bhuvneshwar as the principal uh, sir people who know about bhuvneshwar who know about orissa they also know that uh, from orissa we do not get many candidates to join nda nevertheless i tried my best and the two and a half years that i was there i was able to send six boys to nda and uh, as a principal and then sir i moved there i there there was a meeting of principals there in sainis school bhuvneshwar and one of the person to attend was our joint secretary in the ministry of defense now he saw the school he saw my performance and he spoke to me would you like to move to ministry of defense as an inspecting officer which is the highest appointment that an officer can get in the education corps that means highest appointment among in the sainis school streams so that's how i came to ministry of defense in the ministry of defense i served for four and a half years sir and i think at that time we were able to achieve a lot of lot of uh, advancement in the functioning of sainis schools in the establishment of sainis schools now i'll slowly go through as to what happened and in what kind of work i got involved in the ministry of defense so as inspecting officer sainis schools when duty one duty that you do is you have to inspect the sainis schools when i joined there were 18 sainis schools and after i joined that organization and because i had an extended tenure i was also taken to the various meetings in the ministry ministry of defense and also some of the meetings that i attended were chaired by the honorable minister of defense there we were told that why is it that for the last 32 33 years sainis schools have got stuck at the number of 18 why don't we expand the sainis schools and that is where sir i started working and i am very happy to inform you that i took the strength of sainis schools after a gap of 34 years from 30, 18 to 23 let me mention the sainis school first was sir sainis school pungalwa pungalwa is in nagaland where which was established then we we established sainis school nalanda and sainis school gopalganj in bihar then we planned sainis school chinchip which has recently come up it's in mizoram then sainis school kodagu that's in andhra pradesh and then sainis school in ambikapur chatisgarh now these schools have now gone up to 33 from 23 to 33 but the beginning was made from my time in when the schools were 18 and for that i congratulate all the officers who worked with me in in raising schools like except pungalwa in nalanda gopalganj we were a team of officers and uh, one of those officers has since come here colonel rs nehra he was with me yeah he was with me he's a course mate of mine and he also worked a lot in raise, helping me raise these schools and uh, during the process sir we met lot of chief ministers even one in one case one governor we had to put in lot of hard work in the sense that meeting people then drafting different kind of carrying out changes in the sainis schools rule books and uh, 
uh, meeting the requirement of all the state governments. Because state governments, they, they, they have to provide land. But many state governments, you have to actually go after them to get, you know, a lot of new things, especially when you're using, when you're raising a new school. One interesting incident I will tell you, sir. When we were raising Sainik School, Nalanda and Gopal Ganj in Bihar, the chief minister was Srimati Ravadi Devi. So we went to, at one point we got stuck while we were raising and there was some need of a big electrical generator in Sainik School, Gopal Ganj. So we went to the, we, along with my friends, I went to the residence of the chief minister of Bihar. In those days, chief minister, Mr. Lalu Prasad was not the chief minister. So he was staying in an outhouse. So I asked him, sir, why are you staying in an outhouse? Your wife is the chief minister. He said, no, at the moment, I'm not the chief minister. And I insist that I will be staying outside. So he was staying in a separate barrack. So we went to him. He said, why have you come? I said, sir, this is the point. I mean, we are raising a school in your state and we are not unable to get a generator to start the school because without electricity, what do we do? And Gopal Ganj at that time was a place a little backward in the sense that electrical connections were not given immediately. So then he called the power minister right in front of us. And he said, by evening today, the generator is not provided in Sani school, uh, Gopal Ganj, you may please leave. <laughs> and thereafter, sir, we went there and the generator was installed. I've been to many schools, sir. A lot of stories keep coming to mind. So whatever I, uh, you know, I'll narrate them. They're very interesting. So, sir, this is about bringing up Sanic schools from 18 to 23 and uh, working with a team of very dedicated officers in doing it. Every Sanic school that you build, sir, requires a lot of effort. First, you have to take clearance from the state governments. Then the, you have to involve the chief minister. Then there's a question of land. Then there's a question of going back to MOD explaining things to your bosses and then again coming back. It involves a lot of effort and I was also looking after my office. So along with these officers only this was possible and I'm very happy to inform you that these officers did a lot of good work with me. After that sir, after I left, uh, no sir, during that period only I was also called to SSBs in Bhopal and Allahabad for some attachment. So I've served in SSBs also in selection of officers. So therefore, sir, we prepared cadets with the team, set up resources for NDA training in all the schools, sent a large number of students to NDA. As I told you, 156 from RAMC and from other schools. And that will always remain a big thing in our minds, you know, about our success in RAMC. I must also tell you, sir, a special achievement which I have, which maybe no other officer has, is that when I was posted towards the end of my career, I was posted in Srinagar. There, sir, I was posted in the core headquarters. And at that time, core headquarters was trying to raise an army public school in Pahalgaon. Now, sir, what had happened was that the school building was almost half the school building was ready. But due to terrorists there, they used to terrorize the people. And nobody would send their children to the school. And in any case, I had to work for almost six months or seven months before APS Pelgam was ready. Then one day my core commander told me, it's all right, please take me there. I want to see the school. So I told him, sir, this is what is happening. So he said, nothing doing. So, sir, sir, we took a chance and we opened the school. Can you believe it, sir, a school that we built by spending crores of rupees. There were only four students on the first day. Why? Because they feared that the terrorists we may you know, attack their families and send them back. But I'm very happy to inform you, sir, today that latest information is that now, because the situation in Srinagar and Jammu and Kashmir has changed now, there are about 85 students in the school. It's a huge building and the school is functioning and we have also provided the staff to the school. So I'm the only officer, I happen to be the only officer, though I must admit that my predecessors also those who were there, they've also worked. But finally, it was in my days, somehow it happened. I'm lucky that Army Public School Pahalgaon was open. Thereafter, sir, when, after finishing my tenure in Srinagar Corps, I took voluntary retirement from 
the army and joined Birla Public School Pilani as the principal. From there, sir, I moved to Birla International School, Kishangar. After completing three years, three years and few months with the Birlas, I left the Birlas and then joined JP schools, JP Public School in Noida and JP Public School in Greater Noida. These two schools I brought up right from the beginning, sir. These two schools are doing very well now, about six years old. And in both the schools, we took the latest pedagogical schemes, latest systems of education. And these two schools, as I said, sir, are doing very well. After leaving JP Public Schools, after five years, I joined Cambridge Schools. Cambridge Schools, sir, I joined as academic advisor. There are five Cambridge Schools, and we did a lot of work there also. Though I must say that the challenges were much more in Cambridge Schools. Because you know our education system, when you change something, there are automatically, because I wanted to set up a teacher training institution. About teacher training, if I get time, I'll speak to you later. There's a lot of work involved in that. So, sir, by the time I finished my tenure, I mean, two and a half years in Cambridge schools, the pandemic broke out. And then thereafter, I have not joined anywhere. I'm at home only and trying to do my best as a voluntary person. That is my journey, sir, throughout. <laughs> Any further query from you, sir? Anything? It's such a pleasure to know such a beautiful, such a scintillating journey of yours. Oh my God, you have moved from RMIC to Belgaum, Belgaum to UP, Lucknow, then Bhubaneswar, then Ministry of Defense, then inspecting. And thereafter, you spent a small stint in SSB Allahabad also. And sir. then the Pahalgaum, that was something very interesting, yes, which sir, we had right. mentioned with and Birla Public School, Pilani, yes, JP Public School and Cambridge. Now, I would be very keen to know regarding this uh, teacher's training program, what you are mentioning. Sir. Let's uh, spend five, seven minutes on that. I'm very keen Sir. because today the challenge in our, I'm not talking only now exclusively scenic schools. I'm taking the whole education ecosystem. Sir. Now, we have got a great challenge that uh, when we want to talk about teacher's empowerment, teacher's personal and professional growth when we take into consideration. So teachers anywhere, whether they get posted to scenic school or to military school or to army public school or anywhere else, for that matter, even in uh, Navodhya or in Kendra Vidyalaya, anywhere, the education ecosystem will get empowered only when we have well-groomed, self-motivated, self-driven, enthusiastic, futuristic, taco savvy teachers, then only the system will see the daylight. So what, what you would like to share, because you told if the time permits, we'll talk about, this is next to my heart. I'm very keen to learn and to understand what do you recommend? What do you think should be done as far as teacher's empowerment is concerned? Let's talk about that. Sir, uh, teacher training is also very close to my heart. Hmm. In fact, I take pride in saying that I'm a teacher trainer. I've been a teacher trainer for a long time, hmm. starting from Birla School Pilani. And earlier also in various Senate schools, wherever I went, I have traveled to all 18 Senate schools earlier, sir, and to the other five schools that I mentioned to you. And every Senate school, I told the teachers, I, I told the principals that please devote your maximum time in training teachers. That's our weak area. Now, so coming to, I'll come, I'll come to Cambridge School, Cambridge Schools in the five Cambridge Schools, and also JP Public Schools. So there, my wish was that in every school we should have, there is a, first of all, we must understand that our B8 program has been almost a failure. Through B8, we have not been able to generate good teachers due to various reasons. We'll not go into that now. So what do we do? Now, when I appoint somebody as a teacher, I want the teacher to excel. Now we conduct interviews, we get good teachers. In the interview, they, some of them answer questions correctly, some of them do not. But ultimately we select somebody because we need a teacher. Since my subject is physics, so let's say we select a physics teacher. Now, after selecting him, if you immediately give him an appointment letter, then the problem comes that, sir, none of the courts will ever agree to your any plea that this teacher is not up to the mark. 
the courts will simply say that look colonel choudhary you selected him you conducted an interview he has got the qualification please carry on so now so what i suggested was that when we take a teacher we tell him that look we have selected you for 15 days you will attend training under us we will personally take your training after 15 days if you if you are selected then we keep you otherwise we give you 15 day salary and you go several of the teachers accepted this and i can inform you and then what happened that me along with a panel of teachers sometimes it is a mathematics teacher sometimes teacher of social science we used to take take them to our training center and give them all the provisions all the books and all give them time to prepare and then go through their manner of ask them to prepare lesson plans and then go through their manner of teaching and i tell you sir it did not make a very big difference but it did make some difference so we we this is how what we tried then sir we used to try we should get we used to get uh, experts from ncert and expert in physics expert in chemistry they would come they would sit in the interview board with us and then they would also you know help us in selection of teachers so we made some difference but still i feel that we there long way to go before we can have good quality teachers in all our schools right now if you ask me one of the problems in all our schools is not the up to date quality of teachers it's a great challenge it's a great sir. challenge for all sir. of us you mentioned two very important documents colonel sir one is uh, learning to be of 1972 yes and then learning uh, treasures within yeah that is 1996 yes. both are of the unesco you yes. mentioned yes now would you be kind enough to throw some light what is so special about them sir sir first book is learning to be it came out in 1972 hmm. now sir in 1945 after the second world war ended there was a question that how could the world be so ruthlessly bad in throwing an atom bomb on a small country like japan is it only because the human nature or is it because there is something wrong with our teaching we talk so much about i am talking about from the point of view of 1945 we talk so much about building relations bringing nations closer and we always also say that this has to be done by the education system of the different countries so if you say if you drop an atom bomb on small country that means something is wrong with your something is wrong with your education system so the unesco came out with a preamble sir the preamble to first i'll briefly tell you the preamble to united nation says the basic idea of united nation is to prevent war that there should be no war but preamble to unesco says it's a beautiful line that since wars begin in the minds of men it is in the minds of men that defenses of peace must be constructed in other words it is incumbent on all the nations to produce excellent students reform their education systems and create systems that will give rise to peace now sir before i go back to this point let me tell you that since 1945 we created united nation the wars have actually gone increase as i am speaking to you at the moment there are about 65 wars going on in the world we have finished syria we have finished some countries we have finished libya and we are and we are still going on there is so much tension between india and china it is it is it's it's actually i would say in some way if actually a failure of unesco or united nations united nations was made to prevent war but the wars are only increasing so what do we do and now we come back to our education system in our education system we have to somehow create conditions teach our children about the world we must remove the boundaries of the world that all world is one and then create situations where everybody you know starts thinking in in these terms once all the world leaders start thinking that no war is not good that just generating weapons is not good just firing you know big bullets and aircrafts on each other is not good then only you will be able to create a world of peace and once peace comes automatically education standards will go up and of course 
world will be a much better place. But that's a quite a distant uh, dream. So <laughs> I wonder if we can actually claim something at the moment. How about the can... second? How about the second document? Second document is sir. Uh, it, it came out in nineteen seventy, nineteen ninety six. After twenty two years, hmm. and this document was titled uh, uh, "Learning Treasures learning, Within." Learning the treasure within. Huh. In this document, sir, the authors, hmm. the Mr. Delors, he has actually said that you know, the greatest treasure that you can give to children, greatest treasure is treasure of learning, learning new things. Hmm. And uh, accordingly, our syllabus, syllabi, our textbook should be designed in such a way that we encourage all kind of learning in the children. Mm. So I'll just give you a few examples. When I join, whenever I used to join a school, I would go to the classroom, mm. and as per my experience, I would never see the map of India there. So I'll tell the teachers, "Why don't you put a map of India?" And then, of course, I would not get a satisfactory answer. So our children also. I did not know much about the map so once i put maps in all over all the classrooms and then when i went they went to the classrooms i used to ensure that children could talk about maps for example in our country sir there are more than 1000 rivers but you will not find children naming more than five rivers because nobody looks at the map we have such such treasure hidden in the maps all this treasure must come out so learning is a treasure lying within us also and lot of learning is is treasure in the information that we have in the textbooks but we have to bring it out and that is where and in this particular second sem second uh, uh, group sir the group that we are talking about now learn the treasure within india was also represented and uh, some of the indian educationists they also went there and attended it and it was agreed that under the aus auspices of the united nations india should go in for uh, a new kind of learning and uh, we are we have, we have begun it we have begun the journey even though we are quite late and i hope that uh, people will realize parents will realize that there is a treasure called learning and all children should be encouraged to learn okay okay very interesting very interesting now before i come to because you made a passing remark that if time permits you would like to talk sure. about new you would like to talk about new education policy as well so we'll give you time on that before that uh, it just comes as a curiosity in my mind is there any study available because you're from army education core we are getting brother officers from the army education core and at the same time a lot of people those are watching this particular program like uh, colonel devdat choudhry ji mentioned that uh, one document in 1972 another document in 1996 there are many other documents which are available and the main purpose of the united nation was that there should be global peace but at the same time the war is going on world over in different countries at this point of time also so now over here what comes to my mind is there any study available how many arms how many armaments how much money is being spent on production of arms and armaments vis-a-vis if total that amount if there is a global peace and global harmony and global understanding and the base of entire thing is education if that money instead of destruction and destructive weapons is being spent on education what this world would be and what this place would be very true sir very true so the point i'll just give you one statistics it came out about 4 days back the undp has said that if india wants to educate hmm. all its children hmm. means the people who are still left outside the school system hmm. all its children and uh, also improve the quality of education and I, i'm talking about the school level hmm. we india requires 173 billion dollar per year Hmm. 173 billion dollar per year hmm. we don't have that kind of money hmm. and that's why in many states in india the education standards are suffering but nevertheless hmm. you have raised a very vital point now so as far as armaments are concerned now what happens is that there are certain countries which do not come out with statistics you hmm. can't find out how much china is spending <laughs> how much russia is spending and 
but <laughs> you can find out what india is spending if you do that we are spending yeah. hell of a lot of money on armaments you are right <laughs> and that kind of money this gets diverted to uh, let's say you know some kind of mission national education uh, mission uh, then we can do fantastic work yes, even such this yes. national education policy which has come out now ha is a brilliant policy mm. but then my only question is that when we start implementing it where where are the resources from where the money will come i'm mm. sure the present government is committed to it and they must have worked out and uh, one thing which we can really compliment the uh, finance minister when she announced this 100 schools is actually complimenting the effort of the government if all the private parties let us take you know parties like we have got very big businessmen in this country very big donors also tatas birlas and what not if they adopt five or six schools each and these mm. 100 schools come up then in one way you have promoted peace that's one way mm. so education actually when you spread education mm. and children start learning mm. it is basically helping you to promote peace you have come yes. to the finale question sir <laughs> you have come to the finale question what do you suggest what should be the modus operandi of the ppp mode what we are talking about how when the government is talking about these 100 new scenic schools to be established where there is a partnership between public sector and private sector and ngos and private schools and the state governments they can partner and they can set up these schools so what is your take on that what model would you like to suggest because when i paint the canvas i think all the colors in the brush everything you have taken because you have worked everywhere <laughs> <laughs> so i wish to understand from you uh, sir as far as uh, getting resources is concerned hmm. i think uh, one thing should be clear that in this endeavor hmm. of creating 100 new schools hmm. private schools 100 new scenic schools from the private enterprise the government will not be able to help it will be too much for the government to that let that should be should be very clear hmm. and as nirmala sitaraman ji clearly brought it out also hmm. directly hmm. that it has to be a private enterprise now sir i have gone through the whole thing i have read it also and in my view it's not a difficult thing to do hmm. i'll tell you i'll just explain to you hmm. sir first of all if you see our sari schools today hmm. you have sari school golpara in assam 700 hmm. acres of land hmm. you have sari school bhuvneshwar in orissa 400 acres hmm. you have sari school gorakhal in uh, uttarakhand 500 acres now these kind of schools are actually a now waste of this thing land hmm. now, we, today we have got sari schools you know rivari <laughs> sir, sir we will put it in a little polite way <laughs> we will say that we are not making optimum use otherwise tomorrow they will take away half the land so let's <laughs> let's no. say let's say how to make optimum use of already running and existing you can have organic farming over there you can have That couple of doing, other activities yeah. we can work out yeah. so we won't say sir it's a waste <laughs> no, i, I only want i was coming to my next point this program is going live you know <laughs> okay yeah please go ahead i'm taking a support on this point that to come back to the next point <laughs> yeah so therefore sir today in sanic schools we can make do with 15 to 20 acres so now there is an appeal let's say by the central government or the ministry of defense hmm. to every state hmm. that we are going to set up schools 100 schools and we'll be using your help any state will give you 22 25 acre without any problem sir hmm. when as inspecting officer i went around all the schools in kodagu and some schools in the south also i can tell you sir that we actually got lot of respect from the state governments and whatever hmm. you demanded they gave so, so we will, will not so we'll keep we'll keep taking the points here only sir. do you feel that 25 acre would be adequate to establish an school yes today it, it is adequate sir okay you mean yeah. to say including the residential including the dining halls yes, including sir. the playgrounds yes, including sir. other facilities yes sir okay i was so, i was heading a birla public school in pilani sir okay the total acreage of the school must be around 20 25 acres okay but we had all these facilities that you are saying Okay. The only thing is sir that you will not have spaces, you know, like ah. other schools have those big spaces. Chalo, let's Sanic take a let's take a question. We put five acres more, thirty acre land. We can yeah. take it in mind. Okay. okay. Let's so thirty. Thirty. Thirty acre. Okay. Yeah. So, so land is. Hmm. 
So yes. land should be given by state government. Yeah. Okay. And free of cost. Right. Wo one rupee lagta hai, sir. Wo jo. That one rupee is there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One rupee is there. Okay. And ninety-nine year lease. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Let's go to the second part, construction part. Yeah, construction part. So the private enterprise will have to take over. So For when example, you talk the... about private sector, yes. whether NGO or private school entity, yeah. so then will they not? Okay, fine. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead first. No, sir. They will actually. What happens is hmm. you have to tell them that we are making hundred sanic schools, huh. and each sanic school is made on behalf of you. Uh -huh. You are putting in the money for the building. Uh -huh. You are putting money for the infrastructure, uh -huh. and therefore. This is a matter of pride for you because and and so for this we'll have to first request the big powerhouses like Tata's and all, and I'm sure they will they will never go back. Okay. And we now, have big, big donors now, in India. Now Mrs. Ambani is also running a very yes. prestigious school in Mumbai. Oh, in Mumbai. And yes. she she is very fond of where Shah Rukh Khan and other children yeah, they are studying yeah. there. So. And I even think, if you approach Ambani, Mr. Ambani. Hmm. nobody will say no to you sir. education everybody would be yes everybody will yeah. say and moreover everybody would like to take admission there it will have the best wifi connection yes <laughs> <laughs> okay yes yes because technology is going to play a very important role now over here sir what comes to my mind that uh, how do you how do you look at the entire scenario um, you know when I, when i when i talk about do you feel that should we continue with the CB, cbse syllabi only or do you feel with the changing scenario the technology the cyber security financial management disaster management and like you had this pandemic recently some other kind of an areas should also be included in the syllabi and we should take it out of the clutches or so called the 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 fulcrum of the cbsc because the other day there was a very important uh, inputs which i got from one of the brother officer i wish to share with you they told let us take an example children those are coming to sanic school vis-a-vis -vis children those are staying with their parents and they are staying reasonably good places and they are taking cbsc program now they have got all the time to focus only on academics, academics. whereas yeah. children those are groomed over here the basic purpose of the scenic school is to groom these children to get into nda armed forces and now we can think of paramilitary forces also there's no harm yes many, and they, many, can, many. they can get into other areas as well yes. because i personally feel that in new scenic school system what ecosystem we should not restrict only to nda let them come to other arms for armed forces, paramilitary forces, sister concerns as well. Why should we only think about NDA? That is one part. Secondly, which comes over here is, if we have it out of the CBSC syllabi, children will not have pressure on their mind. They are doing physical activities also. They are doing games also. They are learning mess etiquettes also because the dining hall and everything I see, principal getting smartly dressed up. The poor chap is sweating over there. He is having now open the plate, now close the plate, now put the fork, now hold it this, eat it this way and all that. So there are many other activities those children have to learn and they have to undergo. What is your take on that? Well, my take is that I will just go back to NDA first. In NDA, in every term, they take 300 officers, 300 hmm. cadets. Hmm. Now, at, at best, you can, even if there is an extension, hmm. it may go up to, let's say, 350 or 400. Hello. Beyond okay. that, it will not go in the next at least one or two decades. But produced from these institutions yes. in totality will be 5,000. 5,000. So now yeah. what do you do? Uh -huh. Therefore, NDA cannot be the only, you know, place where they can go. So as you've rightly mentioned, you have identified certain areas and I have also identified certain areas. Very and nice. These children will have to actually huh. go into those areas. And they okay. will say for our entire teaching system in those schools huh. will be will be a system, is a dual system, which will prepare hmm. children at the hmm. same time for hmm. leadership role in India, hmm. at the same time for this academic academic side, so that they can get jobs outside. Very and good. Moreover, sir, another thing, one good thing is that, as I see it, that these schools will not come up before six to seven or eight years. So sir, therefore, now here, I have got another input for you. Give me the guidance. Mm -hmm. Some of the private, 
I do not know because so far we have not seen the document which yes, has yes. been put which has been put up to the cabinet. Hmm. It has gone to cabinet for approval. Now, when we talk about it, it's very important to understand over here. Why are we thinking all the times a new construction? There might be a running private school which can be converted into a scenic school. Provided it has got land and facility for all sports sir, and everything. Sir, let's presume if okay. we ident if we identify somebody, somebody who has done the homework on the budget must have got some, uh, you know, inputs and ingredients and yes, all, and they must have taken into stock. Why hundred school? It okay. could have been only ten schools. Mm -hmm. It could have been twenty schools. It could have been only NGOs and state governments. Why the entity of the private school has been mentioned? So my mind says, with with the kind of a long association with the education ecosystem, that they might have got somewhere the filler that some of the because we should not wait for five or six years. I personally feel it should be done in phases. Some schools can okay. open initial okay. phase, mm -hmm. then second phase, then third phase, then fourth phase. It is not necessary that all hundred school first they should be built up, then they should be opened up and all. And maybe I want to take another idea from you. Should we have girls and boys together or should we have separate identity? What is your take on that? Now, sir, I think uh, girls and boys together is a very good idea. And it very good be, idea. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It should be implemented that way. Okay. It yes. helps many way to improve yes. your personality. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Great. Because always you try to impress the other person yes. and in that bargain you improve. Yes. <laughs> so I forgot to mention to you that I'm also an NDA trainer. For okay. example, I train a lot of children <laughs> in when I was in different schools to join NDA. Sir, I will so write that... kitty, kitty you in your NBA <laughs> trainer. <laughs> okay. And in that process, sir, yeah. in that process, I also learned a lot. Hmm. Yeah. In, uh... You were mentioning about some UNDP document where you told that $173 billion per year India requires to do. This uh, particular document has appeared through UNDP? Yes, sir. It, it came in the papers about three, four days back only. Okay. In the yeah. newspapers. UNDP okay. every year releases its report. Okay. Okay. And so, it, in, in the report about India, okay. they mention okay. that your education system will require so much dollars. Okay. So what do you suggest further now? So if I am of the opinion or if I'm just sharing the idea with you, some of the existing schools, Okay, up to that we have come. Let's take hypothetically five existing schools we adopt mm -hmm. and we convert them into scenic schools. Now, how should be the functioning? Because you have, you have worn all the caps. You have been wearing different caps in different roles. <laughs> now, give me your idea how the operational part should be because the NGO and private sector will have their own interest state government will have its own priorities ministry of defense would like to have who, who will monitor who will inspect and then how about these uh, 100 principals 100 vice principals and then 100 headmasters and then the teachers those are required over there any 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 suggestion from your side on that sir one thing is that uh, we can follow the model of the existing scenic school that would be easy okay Follow means okay, exist present okay. model okay, because that's a fairly easy model to follow, except okay. that the finances will come from the private sector, okay, yeah. So, and operational part, operational have, part, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, sir. Huh. So, selection of teachers huh. that has to be done very, very methodically. Mm. We should select teachers very carefully, teachers because training. these teachers, yeah, teachers, teachers, training. Training, teachers training that's a big thing. I carried out, sir, teachers training in, in two different schools. Once, okay. in Bija, once in Bijapur, once in Bijapur, Bijapur, and once in Science School Kunjpura, I called all the teachers. It was a big affair for 15 days, hmm. and we we definitely gained something out of it, because in Science School, sir, unfortunately, uh, teacher training is not a regular. Uh, now some principals have taken initiative, and they are doing good quality teacher training in the schools, hmm. but uh, we have to pump it up further. Okay. So teachers training is one of the most important areas okay. where our teachers have to be not only training for academic subjects, they mm -hmm. also have to train for the NDA. 
Okay. Okay. And finally, <clears throat> I think um, I just wish to take a little idea from you. Like you have been very fortunate to work in different establishments. I have been little lucky and very fortunate being the first Indian army officer from the armed forces to go on deputation to the Ministry of Tourism, Government of India. Okay, okay. And I set up the first National Institute for Tourism. And with my team, I drafted the whole MBA tourism for India. It's very nice. Very so nice. when I look back in 1988 or so, and thereafter in universities, in colleges, institutions, it was Kurukshetra University, Himachal University, Jodhpur University. Then we came all the way to uh, Jivaji, uh, this, uh, what is that called? Indore, Devi Ahilya Vishu, Devi Ahilya Vishu, Vishu Like that, couple of places. And then we set up Kerala Institute of Travel and Tourism Studies, Bhuvneshwar IITTM, Gwalior IITTM. So couple of places when we talk about. Now, we... We were very closely working when I moved on deputation with the DGR, okay. Director General Resettlement. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in the history of Army, Navy and Air Force uniform, we started travel and tourism courses for retiring defense officers to take on tourism related ventures. Okay. When you talk about nature tourism, ecotourism, green tourism, flora and fauna tourism, wildlife tourism, soft adventure tourism, aero sports, couple of things we had taken over there. Then there was an officer from the Mahar Regiment, Major Rahman. He was ex-Mahar Regiment. He was a major. And he was heading ITC Welcome Group in Delhi. Okay. And with his efforts, I still recall a large pool of short service commissioned officers we brought as HR head in the hospitality establishments. Okay. Third part, General Ugrasen Yadav from Kumau Regiment and General Harwant Krishn, they were the DGR. And at that point of time, we discussed at length and we started six months reoccupation course for retiring defense officers with IM Ahmedabad, IM Calcutta, MDI Gurgaon and a couple of other places. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, do you feel that for these hundred Sanic schools, our retired AC officers, they can be the mentor, they can be the trainers, and we might train some of the civilian pool also, and retiring defense officers also, and I think you would require JCOs and Jawans also for PT, yes, yes. for NCC, for drill and I all. I've noted it, yes. Yeah. So we should have some kind of arrangement with the DGR. How, yes, how do you look at that? So actually, this is a very, very crucial point because, you know, talking about setting up a school is one thing. Mm -hmm. And then going into nitty gritty when the school is being set up mm -hmm. and ensuring that all kind of facilities mm -hmm. are given to the children is quite another Mm. So I'm very happy that you brought up this point because I have been, uh, I've been in the, in some cases I've been raising schools and uh, you have to, whatever you do from wherever you get resources, how you convince the private sector is our job, mm -hmm. but these resources must be provided. Mm. And I'll tell you, sir, that to shape up the personality of an individual, whatever is required, mm -hmm. that kind of effort has to be put in. Sir, you mentioned about the AC officers. We have a very good pool of officers, sir. Hmm. in the Army Education Corps. Hmm. Some of our generals have served in the people who have, who have retired as generals. Hmm. They have served in the schools. They are heading very bigger, big schools. Hmm. And and their their knowledge hmm. and their ability to handle and ensure that the schools run well is we tremendous. Got, we got General Nair, General Goman, General, Nair, General, yeah, General, Goman. General, General uh, this, uh, Ranjit Singh Ji the other day. Yeah, Ranjit these Singh is all, my course mate, yeah, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. These mm -hmm. all are the efforts of Colonel Indra Mohan. Yes. And uh, of course, Colonel Sudhanshu Arya also. They they supported, they helped quite a bit for getting me all these people. Sir, sir actually, and, it, it uh, goes without saying uh, that Army Education Corps is a pool for you. And Dr. Now, Bahar how, also. Uh, mm -hmm. And how you use it is up to you. Yes. 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 Now, you get. You will get all kind of officers. Great. Yes. Great. So we are on the common wavelength now. Yes. That's right. A few of the questions I'll just share with you, which has been posted in the YouTube channel. 
uh, for quality output of the cadets, the upcoming schools to be on the lines of the RIMC. RMC model is the best model. Then co-educational is possible with the top management should be trained and mature to handle properly. Yes. There is also another, uh, uh, you know, idea which has come. Then upcoming schools should be all rounder. Then five to 6,000 cadets will be an asset to the nation in different fields. That's, That's right. another thing. Uh, it is very difficult to get accurate defense budget of each country. Okay. Learning needs to be made interesting rather than scoring marks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, is, that is something very interesting. Weapon producing industries. I think you can take, sir. You can take it. No, 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 no. Okay. I don't want. So, weapons producing industries will not allow the world to live in peace <laughs> <laughs> because war war is a business for someone i understand prediction of armaments is a business for someone so outcome is based upon the input teachers sir, refresher courses is very essential i would like to add that initial spade work and land selection was your truly before moving to ota for palgam okay this is from colonel indra mohan Mm. <clears throat> and uh, I think, sir, there's a lot of intake and a lot of suggestions have come from a number of people. I'm so grateful. And Joba Lakshmi and Nan Lai and Jitendra Rathor and a couple of other people they have sent across Mahesh Ji. So I'm really grateful to all of them. They have sent across Sandeep Chauhan. All of them, they have posted it. Some lot of views. Okay. So finally, what message would you like to give to parents, those want to send their children to Sanic schools? What would you like to tell those kids, those are interested to come to Sanic schools? And what would you like to tell those NGOs and private schools, those want to be partner in Sanic schools? <laughs> uh, so first of all, uh, let me talk about the RMC model. Yeah. Very close to my heart. Hmm. Uh, when I mentioned to you that we, in our time, sent 156 cadets to NDA, those 156, I, I, at least hardly one cadet missed. The rest all were selected. Wow. Today, those cadets are of the rank of colonels and brigadiers in the army. Wow. And wherever I go, sir, any center, any center I go, I go to any market close to a cantonment, I invariably somebody comes up, walks up to me. You're so a celebrity. You're a celebrity. No, 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 no. My cadets only. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They say, sir, you remember me? I was in military uh, school, Belgam. Uh, I was in RIMC. Uh, and so it's a matter of great, great happiness yes, for us that yes. these children are doing so well. Yes. But sir, RIMC model is a bit expensive model. We have 70 acres of land. We okay. have got, it's that we have got, uh, we have got proper buildings, proper establishments, proper houses for all the teachers, all okay. the members of staff. We okay. have got huge grounds. We have got bungalows for 19 teachers who are there. It, if it is replicated, nothing like it. But it mm. is expensive. That's mm. what I wanted to mention. But yes, you are right what? that we need to we need to create an infrastructure mm. which should be appealing to the children, mm. which should be fulfilling their requirements. Mm. And to that extent, sir, uh, when we talk about expenses in building Hispanic schools or military schools, we should also see the benefit that the nation gets. Hmm. You have got properly trained Very manpower powerful. with you. And hmm. these people invariably say they will, they will actually do a lot of good work for the country ultimately. Hmm. Okay. Our armed forces are, sir. So what would you like to tell now the parents? So to parents, I will say that those parents who send their children to Sanic schools, military schools, RIMC, UP Sanic school, etc. That they should continue to believe in the strength of Mother India. They should continue to believe that India is at the moment one of the most powerful nations of the world. And post-COVID, sir, it just so happened that people around the world are now looking up at India. India has done miracles in tackling COVID. We have given so much of medicines, so much of jabs to so many countries. And as a nation, we have come together there may be some breaks here and there, but we have come together to teach the world that how to 
tackle a situation like covid and a situation where you are actually in trouble and we how are you very, come out of it we are very tough <laughs> <laughs> yes sir rugged. And, we are very rugged <laughs> and this message is fortunately gone yeah. because the world and I, let me tell you sir uh -huh. once covid subsides hmm. things improve hmm. you will see a deluge of people coming and visiting india hmm. they would like to see hmm. how do you do you know thing like this hmm. how do you tackle you are 135 crore people hmm. just next to china how yeah. do you do it yeah so my message is that for to all the indians is that please carry on the good work very good and support the government in all positive endeavors how about the small kiddies of the 6th and 9th standard <laughs> <laughs> they have to work so work hard and enjoy life uh, work, and, uh, okay. work hard and also enjoy life okay there's lot of things we do in the school so for example we make them do debates we make them participate in different sports they they should take informed interest in all these things and i'm sure they in the years to come this school will be further strengthened and as you and as you are pursuing so diligently sir if this 100 schools also come up then i'm sure in the next about decade india will be on path to a different kind of glory and finally sir i would like to say that as far as education is concerned I I don't have to give statistics sir that America almost three fourth of economy of America is with the Indians today, Indians who are sitting there. So I don't have to give statistics <laughs> that the way our people are working across the world. So uh, now the future is going to be very bright mm -hmm. as far as India is concerned. Once the COVID thing subsides, and then uh, if the schools also come up, they will support mm -hmm. the endeavor, support the endeavor of the government, mm -hmm. and parents should rest assured. that in the long run if the children join the army um, then they will they will definitely benefit <coughs> i didn't want to share this but colonel devdat choudhury ji has pushed me and he wants to take the word out from my mouth i got the statistics this morning only last year if you go through i'm not taking the 2019 i'm taking 2018 statistics punjab alone 18000 crore is a revenue leakage that is for students going overseas to different countries for their education just imagine yes 80000 crores oh. so this new education policy which is coming if we put into the right perspective right implementation with the right weightage a lot can be done because there a lot of stats i keep this morning only with one of the top officers of the indian administrative service i was discussing and i was taking down the notes and we both were taking into consideration and we were talking about uh, what all is going on over there we just tried to carry out the analysis how much is the leakage of the revenue and same way i also wish to share with all of you the outbound tourism from india is more than the inbound tourism to india we all got to realize we should promote our domestic tourism also. we should travel within india media entertainment industry our film makers our television serial makers music album makers kindly come out with your vision you should promote your own country you have got treasures you have got mountains you have got rivers you have got all seasons you have got different places you have got such a beautiful scenic beauties i do not want to name any country at this point of time but you can't imagine our chamber has carried out the complete research on that how much is the revenue leakage from india on movie makings abroad yes. and vis a vis if those movies are made in, in india, india how much money how much employment how much startup how much entrepreneurship how many openings what all can come up well we can talk on that some other day and the final take we give it to you the most difficult question how ngos and private schools become a part of this journey because private sector always have got their own uh, vested interests and they will see it from that perspective so the no, last sir, but question, this uh, yeah. but this vested interest will work for them no? so for example let's say ambani's or let's say Hmm. adanis anybody hmm. sir hmm. you take any big or uh, many of our uh, well known donors like tatas and hmm. all birlas hmm. hmm. now mahindra and mahindra is a very mahindra and mahindra and sir birlas yeah. are already into education ansal group ansal group if you they have set, they have set up a university near yes, next sir. to gurugram yeah you you sir just hmm. uh, if, the, if you tell mr birla hmm. that he is constructing schools all over 
and if you request him that one or two schools he can make for this atmanirbhar Sem- bharat scheme also yeah. yeah then he will be willing to do that you know only thing is that right approach and the approach at the right level hmm. and hundred schools are actually sir frankly speaking with the kind of resources and money that our businesses have today hundred hmm. school is peanuts hmm. nothing much hmm. land will be given by the state government hmm. complete staff will be given by the state government all you have to do is to give the building hmm. and other support yes i'm sure they will agree lot can be done in that respect you know yes. i'll quote an example very prestigious institution which has been set up in the state of punjab at mohali it is called isb mohali isb mohali yes sir. Now, the land was given by the land was given on 1 rupee by the state government so and the building has come up over there with the private sector whether it is soon sunil baharti mittal mm-hmm. or it is for that matter the other stakeholders the max group you've got uh, ansel group you've got couple of other stakeholders those have come over there so lot can be done i think in that respect thank you very much kan chaudhary sir it was such sir, a pleasure you have to, to have give you, me sir. few more minutes sure sir please sir i just wanted to tell you that you know about the galwan incident hmm where karnal santosh died hmm so sir the the day he died hmm on the following day i composed a poem hmm within 24 hours hmm. this poem was sent to his father hmm and his father was he kept this poem the poem was also published in the journal of the sani school korukunda hmm. and uh, his father was very happy what i'm why i'm saying is this is that this is how we generate camaraderie uh if you have time do you want to hear the please, poem sir? please sir please okay. please go through it's in fact uh, a tribute from our side to yes. the department so santosh yes he stood on his being's edge and surveyed the yonder hills a lone accomplice of his fate across the nala santosh should still reports had come that the slimy enemy had plans to capture our land and santosh had briefed his brave men to fight till the last man leader of men he moved across not knowing what lay before but destiny of nation and his courage took him safely to the shore assessment made santosh moved on but slimy enemy had devious plans with wired batons they attacked and with powerful swings santosh gave them back then our men chased fiercely as enemy made for a run but oh fate one iron baton hit dear santosh on the head and santosh fell down among his men who too fell surrounded who too, who too fell surrounding their strong leader our brave men killed 40 enemies and left a lesson for all that no enemy will ever be allowed to touch even an inch of our land men like santosh are very rare who answer the call of destiny an outstanding soldier icon he held on to our territory with great dignity there are moments when one is tested and creative fire makes the move santosh surely was a chosen one he led he fought and he won santosh's saga will always remind us of lord hanuman's eternal tone that great are the greatest when they stand alone this is the poem i composed within two days and sent it to his father god bless the departed soul he was a great soldier and we pray to almighty let uh, his soul rest in peace because uh, we all are from the armed forces and once you put on the uniform that day you decide yes. and that day you take a pledge nothing matters it's my soil it's my country it's my countrymen it's my fellow <clears throat> countrymen and we have to take care of them whatever capacity wherever we are with these words uh, great gratitudes and thanks to colonel devdat choudhry ji it was a pleasure it was a treat to be with you and we will take you on board with us in this journey and we wish to learn and continue learning from you from your rich reservoir which you are carrying as far as the uh, ecosystem of education empowerment is concerned thank you sir sir, sir one more thing thank you uh, yeah i normally finish all my talks like this with our core prayer i'll take one more yes. minute sure sir sure okay. so this core prayer is written by rabindna tagore and this encompasses all that education is hmm. i'll just take one minute sir hmm. where the mind is without fear and the head is held high where knowledge is free 
where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where the words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sands of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action, into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thanks for your most valuable time. 